What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. In this episode, we're going to continue on our series of PHP tutorials for beginners, where I set the foundation on what you need to know in order to get started with PHP. And the ultimate goal is to help you become a professional PHP developer. And that's why having a solid foundation is extremely important. As our videos progress, we're going to get more advanced in our tutorials. And ultimately, you're going to learn everything you need to know about PHP. So in this video, we're going to be talking about strings in PHP. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification icon so that way whenever I create new videos, you'll be notified. And for code snippets, you can always visit my website, pixelmerb.com forward slash PHP followed by the tutorial link that's related to the video. So in this case, PHP strings. So what is a string within PHP? Well, it's a sequence of letters and words that make up a sentence or a name, numbers that are of a string type, and special characters or combination of characters. You can create a string using either single or double quotation marks. You can store a string within a variable, and you can output it to the browser by using either the echo or print construct. Okay, so here, in this first example, I'm going to copy this to my clipboard. I'm going to go to my code editor, and what I'll do here is I'm going to create a new file, and I'll call it strings.php. Then I'll just give it to the sidebar for now, and I'll just paste in that code snippet from my website. I'll get rid of the closing PHP tag since we don't need that at the bottom, since this is going to be a standalone PHP file. Okay, so what I did here is I created a variable called string example. I assigned it the value of a string, hello world. And you can see that hello world is contained inside of single quotation marks. And now on line three, I'm going to echo the variable string example. And a matter of fact, instead of a BR tag here, Get rid of that, put in double quotation marks, and a new line character since we're going to be outputting this in our terminal. And then on line four, I'm showing you that you could actually just echo or output to the terminal or to the display of a browser a string without having to be tied to a variable. So that's why we have echo, hello world again. And this time we're using double quotation marks. You could also easily use single quotation marks here as well. So let's save this. Let's open up our terminal window, which is either going to be terminal, new terminal window right here, or you can press control and a tilde sign. And you see we have our terminal window down here. All right, so if we type out PHP followed by the name of the file, strings.php, we see we have hello world, which is from this line over here, line three. And then we have hello world again from line four. Now, one thing you're going to want to keep in mind with strings is the use of the quotation marks. What happens, I'm just going to put in a new line character here. What happens if we go to a new line and we say echo, let's put single quotation marks and then say I'm back. And then we think we're going to close off our main quotation mark there, our single one right there, right? Put in our semicolon save it, you see that our editor over here already is showing us that we have an error right here. And it's displaying that we have this right here, six errors. If you click that, you see we have a syntax error. You see we have an unexpected name, undefined constants. It's a lot going on here. If we go back to the terminal, if we try to use our up arrow to output what we just entered there, you see we also get PHP parse error and parse error syntax error. So what happened? The PHP parser, what it's doing is going to line six, it's gonna use the echo construct that sees we have a single quotation mark there, then it sees that we have another single quotation mark here, and it thinks that's the end of the string itself. But then we have the M space and back over here and another single quotation mark. So it thinks this is a uh, constant and the interpreter is not acting as it should or as we anticipate it should. One way to get around that is right before that second quotation mark where you're trying to say I'm back, you could put the slash right there and this is to escape it. You use the backslash to escape that quotation mark. And now if we save it, you see all the errors go away. And if we go down to our terminal, hit the up arrow, 
you see we have I'm back being displayed as we wanted it to be. So the parser is going to line six. It sees a single quotation mark, sees I'm, but right before that quotation mark there, it also notices that we have the backslash. So it's not going to treat this single quotation mark as the end of the string. It'll just continue with the string until it comes to the next single quotation mark. And the same thing for, let me go over here, put in a new line character. If we use a double quotation mark, echo, and if we want to show a quote, this is a quote, you would typically use the double quotation marks again, right? Let's say talk is cheap. Show me the code. What we have going on here is again, we have another error. We're going to echo out. This is a quote, but we have the opening double quotation marks here. And then the parser is going to see this one here and think that this is the end of the string itself. But then it goes over here and it sees this and it's showing that it's an error. Even though what we intend is for this right here, talk is cheap, show me the code. We intend for this to be in quotation marks. And then we anticipate closing off our quote or closing off our string over here. So again, if we save that, we have all those errors. Go over here, hit the up arrow. We see we have errors. So the way around that again is to go here, put in that backslash. And then on this one, put in the backslash here as well. Save it. And now the PHP parser recognizes that this string right here starts off with the double quotation mark. It processes the string and notices the backslash and the double quotation mark here. It's escaping that it goes forward and notices the next double quotation mark is also being escaped. And then it notices that we have our closing double quotation mark for the string itself. Save it, go down to the bottom. You notice there is no errors within the editor. Hit the up arrow. We see this is a quote, talk is cheap, show me the code that's being displayed as we want it. All right. So I'll just put another new line character. Now, another way to deal with this is I'm just going to copy this line right here, paste it right there. Instead of escaping, what we could do is use the double quotation mark there and close it off there. So now we're using double quotation marks to contain the string. And now we don't need to escape the single quotation mark here. And I'm back. And the same thing for this one. If we copy that, go down here. Instead of starting off with a double quotation mark, we use a single quotation mark. Then we don't need to escape that one. We don't need to escape this double quotation mark. And we'll replace that closing double quotation mark with a single quotation mark. And you see we have no errors. We'll save that, go down to the terminal, hit the up arrow, and you see it's working just as it should. So you could either escape the single quotation marks or double quotation marks. You could escape them or you can mix them. But the way they have to be mixed is the value of the full string that you're going to be outputting has to be contained in the same quotation marks. So if you're going to be using single quotation marks, then you might want to use double quotation marks inside of it. If it's for a quote and then close it off with a single quotation mark. If you know you're going to have a string that has a quotation mark conflict, like I'm back, then you're going to want to use the double quotation marks in that manner. Now, another thing is if you are using the double quotation marks, you see here how we concatenated the new line character on line four. We actually don't need to do that. We can get rid of that closing quotation mark and the period and the opening qu double quotation mark there. Give it a space just so we could identify it. And since the new line character is using an escape sequence inside of a double quoted string, it'll be processed just as we want. Save it in the terminal. You see, we get the same results. Now that's not the case inside of a single quotation mark string. And the reason is because of the way the PHP parser handles single and double quoted strings. The escape characters of a carriage return, a new line character, a horizontal tab, a vertical tab, things of that nature. If you're going to want to use those, you're going to have to use the double quotation marks. When you're working with strings in PHP, there's a bunch of built-in functions that you're going to find very helpful. 
helpful. And while the list of functions are going to be too long for this one video, I'll demonstrate a couple that you might find helpful or you might find interesting. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to comment all this out. Now go here and I'm going to say echo string underscore shuffle. Now we're using a built-in function within PHP and I'm going to want to shuffle the characters in this string here. Let's save that. Let's go down to our terminal, hit the up arrow and then return. And now you see it took the value of string example, which is hello world, and it shuffled all the characters. This could be helpful if you want to randomize any characters within the string. And you can get very creative with this built-in function. So that's the string shuffle function itself. Now let's take a look at another one. I'm going to go copy line number four, go to a new line, paste it. I'll just comment this one out so we don't have that there, but I want you to be able to see it. And then instead of string underscore shuffle, I'm going to say string underscore split. I'm going to save that, go down to our terminal, hit the up arrow. Matter of fact, for this one, instead of echo, I should be using var dump. So I'll just uh, copy this here, or I'll just go over here, put var underscore dump parentheses, and then I'll just say this whole thing right here, cut it, put it inside, clean this up, save it, go back to the terminal, hit the up key, and now what you see happened, let me make this take over the full screen, is it turned the string hello world into individual characters. It split them into an array. So it shows you that you have 11 items within the array. In the zero position, which is the first item, we have one string element, which is H. And then in position one, we have E. And it goes all the way down until we spell out hello world. So that's string split. Okay, so that is how we do that. Let me comment this out. Now I'm going to go to another line and I'll say echo string underscore replace. And then right here, what I'll say is in double quotation marks, I'm going to say, look for world and then a comma, another set of double quotation marks and replace world with, let's say my name, Joel, and then another quotation marks. And then I'll just use the string example variable make sure we close that off with the semicolon save it and so what it's going to do now it's going to echo out string replace it's going to look for world inside of the string example variable here which is hello world it's going to replace world with joel let's see if that works go down to our terminal hit the up arrow enter it says hello world now why did it do that it did it because we put world over here and it's with a lowercase but over here in our string example world is uppercase so we would have to make that uppercase and if we go down here we'll do that again and now we see it shows hello joel or we could use if you wanted to keep that lowercase we could use a case insensitive version of the string replace function which is string underscore i replace save that go back down here hit the up arrow and you see it still works so that's something you're going to have to keep in mind case sensitivity is a thing so if you want to use a case insensitive version you'll have to use the second function which is string underscore i replace or if you want to make sure case sensitivity is respected then you just use the string replace function okay so now what can we do let me comment this one out go to a new line give us some space there's another function you might want to use or get familiar with. It's going to be string underscore word underscore count. And then we're going to take the variable string example, save that, go to our terminal, hit the up arrow, and you see it returns the value of two. It's telling us there's two words in the string example variable hello world first word second word so that could be helpful another one is instead of string count we can say string ling or string length now one thing you're going to notice is that some of the built-in functions will separate the words with an underscore while others will combine them together okay so what is the string length 
function do. We'll save that, hit the up arrow key in our terminal, and it tells us we have the number 11 here. What that's saying is that there's 11 characters inside of this string. So let's count that real quick. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Well, we count 10 letters, right? So why does it say 11 characters? Well, because it's counting the space in the middle of the words there. So that's what the string length function is doing. Okay, so in this video, we covered what a string is within PHP, how to use a string inside of a variable, and with double quotation marks and single quotation marks, and how to escape the quotation marks when you want to use them inside of your string, and also covered a couple of functions that you might find useful when working with PHP. Now there's a lot more that goes into this and throughout these various tutorials, I'll be demonstrating more functions that are built in with PHP itself, and also later on how to create your own functions. Okay, so if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification icon. If you have any thoughts or suggestions or comments, leave them down below. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Happy coding.